In today's COVID-19 update, we speak with the Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony, about a global fund which government has secured for COVID-19. We also learned that the capacity at the ICU of the Infectious Diseases Hospital at Liliandal has increased. Good morning, Minister. Thank you so much for joining yes. us. Well, thank you very much for having me on the program. Uh, one of the first things that I wanted us to address, so you've secured a grant from the from the Global Fund for COVID-19. Uh, how much is it and basically how is it going to be used? Well, as you would know, the Global Fund has been one of our traditional partners now in, in health. Um, in the past, we have worked with the Global Fund to get resources for HIV, TB, and malaria. But since the pandemic started, the Global Fund has also been allowing the use of some of its funding to deal with um, COVID-19. And so we have been um, able last year, late last year, uh, to receive some of um, a small grant from the Global Fund for purposes um, of responding to COVID-19. And as of this year, the Global Fund opened a special window uh, where countries can apply for a specific COVID-19 grant. Uh, we started that application about a month ago and we have put it in and um, as of two days ago, Guyana has been very successful. Um, they have written to us uh, acknowledging that our proposal has been successful and so they'll be uh, funding us um, for the things that we requested. All right, and what are some of the requests? If you can just highlight a little bit of how it's so, going to be spent. So with this particular request, one of the things that we have asked the Global Fund for is resources to ensure that at all our regional hospital that we enhance our ICU capability. So these funds would assist us in adding uh, ICU type of beds. It would also uh, assist us in procuring monitors and ventilators and create a space in each one of the regional hospitals so that we can manage uh, severe uh, patients with severe COVID. So we, we're expecting um, about 1.8 million US dollars over the next couple of months to, to be able to uh, do these uh, activities. 1.8 million US, all right, yes. sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, how soon after, you said you're going to receive it in a month's time, and how soon after that do you expect to? Well, there are some administrative things that um, we'll have to go through over the next uh, couple of days. And then, of course, Global Fund would have its own uh, peculiar procurement processes. So for those things that we have to buy, we'll have to follow those procedures. But uh, the staff within the ministry, they are, um, they have worked with the Global Fund before and they are, they understand um, what they have to do. So I don't expect that it will take too long to uh, get these funds and to um, expedite the procurement so that we can get things in. So, as you know, one of the things in managing severe patients is that some of those patients would require ICU care. And while we would have built a 25-bed ICU at the uh, Ocean View Hospital, uh, we have seen at times when you can have surges of patients and perhaps you need to make sure that you have extra capacity in case you have those surges. So we have added that capacity to our ICU at the COVID hospital and so we've expanded it to about 35 uh, beds now. 
So we have that extra capacity. We have a number of sites in Region 4. Uh, we have on the East Coast, we have on the East Bank, and we have sites in Georgetown. Now, we have been working to expand the sites in Georgetown so that people can have more access to vaccination. And in collaboration with uh, the municipality and with our health centers in the city, uh, we are hoping to make sure that people have more access. Uh, so as of now, we have the East La Penitence, um, a site at East La Penitence. We have a site at uh, Festival City, another site at Lodge. And these sites would be open from Monday to Friday from 8 to 6 p.m. And I want people to note that because we are going until 6 p.m. So persons coming home from work um, still have an opportunity to come to any one of those sites and they can get their vaccines. We also have a site in Sophia at the Sophia Health Center. That one operates from 8 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon. We also have a site at the Campbellville Health Center and that goes Monday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. And then on Tuesdays from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And on Saturdays and holidays from 8 uh, a.m. to 3 p.m. So in terms of our vaccination numbers now, um, as of yesterday, we have had 237,111 persons who have been vaccinated uh, with one of the first dose vaccines. Uh, this would amount to about 48.7% of our adult population. We also have, uh, of those that received their first dose, we have 116,903 persons who would have already received their second dose. This is 24% of our adult population. That's false. Um, and the reason why that is false is because a virus and these viruses that we're dealing with that cause COVID-19, uh, they go into the cells in the body and then they, they use the, the cells, um, the systems within these cells to replicate itself. But every time the virus tries to replicate itself, there's a potential for, for there to be an error in that replication process. And every time there's an error, it means that you potentially are getting a virus uh, that would have uh, some form of, an error is really a mutation. So you'll have viruses that are emerging with mutations. So, most of these mutations are insignificant, but some of the mutations uh, can have uh, clinical impact. But coming back to your question, is that vaccination does not um, give rise to new variants. Vaccination would protect you. Well, that's it for today's COVID-19 update. Of course, we just spoke with the Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony. Remember, for more information, you can log on to our website, dpi.gov.gy, and the Ministry of Health's website as well, health.gov.gy, and of course, our social media platforms.